Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. You know, there are millions of Americans who are taking an aspirin every day to hopefully prevent a heart attack or a stroke. But some of the latest studies suggest that if you have never had a heart attack or a stroke, taking an aspirin a day may not be worth it, may not work as well as we thought it would, may not work as well as we thought. Time for a Mayo Clinic expert opinion. Joining us in studio is Mayo cardiologist, heart specialist, Dr. Stephen Kopetsky. Dr. Kopetsky, good to have you back, especially today, because these new studies have come out that questioned whether or not people ought to be taking an aspirin every day if they've never had a stroke or a heart attack. What do you think? Thank you, Tom. The, uh, that's a very interesting question, and a couple of these studies that came out uh, came with conclusions that it didn't help. Well, it, it's not for everybody, that's for sure, but there are some people that help. Now, we know for years that aspirin reduces the risk of stroke in women, but not men, first stroke. Aspirin reduces the risk of heart attack in men, but not women. So men and women are equal, but we're different, obviously, in our response to aspirin. Now, in the studies you're talking about, a couple of things. One is the ones that were presented uh, in European uh, Congress of Cardiology. They tried to get people that were, had at least a risk of 10% for a stroke or a heart attack over the next 10 years, and they enrolled them and found no difference. Well, they, what they found in retrospect was that... Found that the aspirin didn't do anything with regard to prevention of stroke or heart attack. That's right. Okay. And what they found, though, was that they actually enrolled patients that only had a 9% risk of stroke or heart attack. So they enrolled lower risk patients than they planned. Now, the guidelines in this country, in the U.S., are to recommend or consider aspirin for people that have a risk over 10%, which is the reason they did the study, over 10%. Okay. Uh, but if, uh, if they didn't have a risk over 10%, it probably doesn't help them, and that's what the study showed. Okay, so how do you find out? You, you put the risk in, in percentage terms. Uh, how do you find out what your risk is? Yeah, that's a good question. There are a couple of places you can go online. You can go to the American College of Cardiology or the American Heart Association. Both have, they're, they're connected. And it is called the ACC AHA Risk Calculator Plus. You just type that into your, into your uh, search engine on your computer. Uh, and actually just look up uh, Risk Calculator Plus and it'll come up. And it'll ask you some questions. What's your blood pressure? What year were you born? What's your gender? Uh, what's your cholesterol? You do need to know your cholesterol levels and you need to know your blood pressure you need to know your blood pressure cholesterol and, and cholesterol okay. and be helpful to know if you're on medicines for blood pressure and things like that okay or if you have diabetes or on medicines for diabetes then you tell them this and it will tell you what's your risk then for a fatal or a non-fatal heart attack or stroke over the next 10 years well how does it know whether it's going to be fatal or not well it doesn't it just groups <laughs> it all together okay I mean, it's just all <laughs> All events. All right. And then you are saying that if that figure comes out to 10% or above, even if you've never had a heart attack or a stroke, you should consider taking an aspirin every day. You should consider taking an aspirin. However, there's always a risk of bleeding. We know that as you go through life, your risk of heart attack and stroke goes up. But as you go through life, your risk of bleeding on aspirin also goes up. The question is, what goes up faster? And its actual fact is that your risk of bleeding on aspirin goes up faster than your bleeding than your risk of heart attack or stroke. No kidding. So, so this is stomach <coughs> bleeding because the aspirin irritates the gastric lining, the stomach lining. Primarily, yeah, or sometimes very rarely inter in your head bleeding. So how do you decide? Well, how do you decide? You uh, there are you, it's helpful to talk to your provider, your primary care provider. There are um, certain apps out there. You know, bleeding apps, you can actually go on your phone and say, what's my risk of bleeding? We use it all the time in the hospital, on hospital service, because they're scientifically driven and found to be accurate. You mean, so how can, how can an app tell you what your risk is of bleeding from taking an aspirin? Uh, it asks you, again, questions hmm. like, have you ever bled? Uh, do you have frequent nosebleeds? Do you take a lot of uh, medications for arthritis like these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen because that increases your risk of bleeding. Do you drink alcohol to excess and fall down? Do you walk with a cane? Do you fall easily? So they can actually look and, and give a pretty good estimate. 
Hmm. So let me make sure I have this this correct. Um, you need to know what your risk is of a fatal or non-fatal heart attack or stroke. And you can figure that out by going to the American Heart Association or the American College of Cardiology websites. Right. And then, then you put in what? Risk factor assessment? Yes. It'd be risk calculator plus. Risk calculator plus. Right. And then it'll ask you some questions. Yeah. You push the button, enter, yeah. and it will tell you what your risk is for a, a heart attack or a stroke in right. the ensuing 10 years. or In, in the ensuing the, 10 years. And the nice thing about that uh, particular web page, too, is you can say, well, what if I go on aspirin? What does my risk go down to? Mm. What if I have high blood pressure and I treat it? What does it go down to? What if I have diabetes and treat it or high cholesterol and treat it? It'll actually tell you before and after. Now, these are all predictions. We can't predict the individual patients. It's obviously uh, just an estimate. But it gives you a pretty good estimate. I've had patients that their risk is 35%. It goes down to 12% by treating their blood pressure, taking an aspirin, taking care of their uh, cholesterol. And when you say taking an aspirin, exactly what do you mean? How much? Would baby aspirin, one adult aspirin, how much? Yeah, the study that was done, we just mentioned a minute ago, was 100 milligrams of aspirin. Now, that's a European thing. We don't have that av available here in this country. We're usually 81 or 162 or 325. And the studies have shown that 81 is really good for almost all people. There are some recent observational studies, which means they just looked at tens of thousands of patients, and found that people who were heavier maybe needed more aspirin, but that's not written in stone. All right, 81 is a baby aspirin, and baby. for most people that would be okay. Adult low-dose aspirin. Babies don't take the aspirin. Anymore, so. <laughs> All right, as long as I've got you here, I want to ask you a couple of uh, recent headlines, and one of them was uh, about diet, and it mm -hmm. says, study claims red meat and cheese aren't as bad for your diet as previously thought. Do you yes. see this study? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. What do you think? Well, this was the, the PURE study, and pure. what's interesting it about it, uh, done out of Canada, and they did they looked at, at numerous countries in every continent except that's populated except for the Antarctica, and they looked at a huge population and said that if you eat a higher fat diet, higher saturated fat diet, you actually had better longevity or less chance of dying. What they included, though, was a lot of a very, uh, very uh, poor people lived in a low socioeconomic class. So they mainly ate very high carb diet, like 61% of their, of their calories were carbs on average. If they could eat more meat, which is an expensive, very expensive item. Remember, you know, 10,000 years ago, we didn't eat meat. We didn't like kill a deer for breakfast. You know, meat was a celebratory, meaning you would celebrate a wedding, a truce, a birth, something like that. You didn't eat it all the time. So they actually found that the eating the meat and eating the cheese uh, the, the dairy actually lowered your mortality, but it probably was confounded, we call it, or kind of affected by the people in the study. They were not very wealthy. They didn't have much money. They couldn't afford, you know, the normal foods we would eat in this country. So if they ate the meat, they actually did better. So you're not necessarily saying that's a good idea. You're, I mean, you're still a proponent of the Mediterranean diet. Well, it's very interesting. That same group, the Pure group, uh, that was published in Lancet just last month, along with the ERIC study, which is another study, they looked at huge populations, and they actually came together, and Pure actually changed its, its recommendations, the Pure group. They found that if you eat an average of 50% of your calories of, as carbohydrates, now we would recommend in the Mediterranean that be legumes, fruits, vegetables, things like that, not, uh, you know, not processed foods, not processed rice, white sure. bread, et cetera that that was the low point for mortality. If you ate more, like 61%, like I said earlier they, in the, in the pure, earlier PURE study, your mortality went up. If you ate less carbs, your mortality went up. So the, you know, remember your mother said, eat a balanced diet, Tom, when you go to school. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's actually pretty good advice, but if you eat a Mediterranean balanced diet, that's even better, which means about, about half carbs. Now these low carb diet, the fanatics really get excited about that. They think that's way, way too much carbs. Uh, but uh, if you look at the studies, eating a low-carb diet uh, increases your mortality and it increases your heart attack rate. All right. So you're still a proponent of the Mediterranean diet. Everything in moderation, right? Really? With yeah, the, the yeah. emphasis on fruits and vegetables? Very, very true. A plant-based diet, and you get three ounces of red meat a day which, uh, you know, isn't much, but if you go to a steakhouse and you order a steak and they bring you three ounces, you say, hey, where's the manager? What is this thing on my plate? You know? <laughs> but you could have a bigger steak once a week, right? 
if not. you can say three three ounces a day and you get twenty one ounce steak on the weekend. Uh, that's right, mm-hmm. but that means the rest of the week. <laughs> yeah, no steak. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. Thanks very much, Dr. Kopetsky, for being with us. We've been talking about aspirin and aspirin a day to prevent heart attacks and strokes. We got the lowdown. Dr. Kopetsky, thanks. Thank you, Tom.